All right, all, welcome back to another episode for Tales of Magiel. Last time we entered the first few initial levels of High Peak, and I actually had my first death in this whole run, finally. So, what better place to finally you know, experience it than at the very last dungeon of the game? So, I guess that's great. I don't have to do something that will necessarily get me automatically killed, so, so to speak. Anyhow, so at this point, we're basically just moseying along into uh, the later levels of High Peak. We've basically reached the part where the layout changes to have a fortress. And um, once it basically changes over to like this sort of fortress design, um, you basically get these like vaults as well. Also note that there's basically uh, the unique and its stairs right up there. So basically, this is the unique this time. We're going to have this Naga Siren. And you look like you have got... Archer type talents. Yeah, this guy's got Archer type talents and he's also got maybe Corruptor type talents as well, maybe. No, he's got Reaver talents. So basically, this is an Archer Reaver this time around, is what we're going to be facing off against. And down here, we basically got. Here, here's the first worm. A bunch of these guys down here. Another Orc uh, Assassin Rares. This time it's going to be. Um, an orc assassin alchemist. Looks like we got ourselves a room of naggers over here for some reason. Quite a few groups of enemies. You know, technically this, uh, the unique is like all by itself up there, so I'm kind of edging toward going after it like a little bit early. But maybe let's go after Samurai here instead. Okay, perfect. I don't mind, uh, Getting these guys to sort of, you know, pop up toward my direction. After this, we'll just basically jump down here. Summer is there, the uh, Naga is going that way. And you I don't mind going after immediately, so you know what, we're just going to jump at you, I guess. Oh, looks like that guy's activated for me, so he's off on uh, a rampage toward my direction. Note that these guys are in a vault, so I don't have to worry about them, but... Uh, gotta worry about the alchemist a little bit, so... That's an issue. We're just going to go boink. You're out of the way. They're all dead. There's another summoner down this direction, so we'll go kill him. So they're basically all dealt with, so go up here. Wait a few levels for not to come back. Another demon type of enemy to worry about. These guys to sort of worry about. Groff is warm at first. This guy. Get my mana back. Um, I'll note that this demon, by the way, this guy right here. Now, um, besides the fact that he's also got spell feedback, I, I really should note that he's also got massive blow as well. So, he's actually got two prodigies on this guy. And, um, you want to be very careful of him as a result. Massive blow I don't think is a big issue for his character because I've got fairly good defense. But, oh, okay, maybe it is a big issue. So, this massive blow, basically what it does is he basically slammed me into a wall. He actually liquefied the wall behind me as a result of uh, hitting me with that spell. Or that, that um, prodigy uh, attack right there. All right, that's all dealt with. I should probably deal with this uh, Naga that's running around over here, so... We are going to just use a movement infusion. Let's do that. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm just going to get them to sort of say hi to me. Okay, we're going to do this now. And... Apparently the worm isn't coming for me yet, so that's kind of cool. Coming for me now. And there we go, we got rid of all those guys. Okay, the Unique. Hopefully the Unique won't pro cause too much problems. I don't think it will. We're just going to basically Shadow Step, Cripple, Flurry, Dual Strike. It's already dead. So, very easy uh, Unique this time around. There's Don's Blade. Um, we're going to open this like this. We're just going to go bing, 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 bing. Yoink! 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 All dead. Alright, so one of these vaults basically right here. Note that when you basically get to this point, these guys are going to be insane levels, so... Now we got like level 77 guys in a vault. Way over my level. But, you know, none of these guys have really posed much of a problem. Now that's actually a very interesting uh, helmet we just picked up. The Crown of the Elements is actually a really powerful uh, item. Basically, when you put this on, it actually gives you this big boost to all your resistances. And also gives you a little bit of uh, damage in melee when you like attack with it. Also gives you some C visibility. I actually consider it as one of the good endgame um, helmets to sort of make use of. Um, I'm not sure I really care about me using it over this, but it is actually a really nice one to sort of, you know, note and like, you know, possibly make use of. This is not his character. I think we'll actually use this one here because, uh, I prefer to, I think, to sort of have the uh, defense for confusion immunity. I'm not sure. I might actually want to keep this just to maybe put it on. I'm mostly using this more so for, uh, the you know the ability to sort of look around, not really doing much else of it. I don't know if I'll maybe maybe put this one on instead of the crown of the elements. We'll see. I'll just decide when I get there. Other stuff in here: Don's blade, blah blah. This is a good time to go through this list to see if there's anything in here, and uh, I don't see anything you know really catch my attention. So sell that. Continue my rampage. Looks like we're getting orcs in this um, this specific vault. Notice that this guy keeps blinding me every single damn time he basically uh, hits me. So this is actually one of those effects where I'm finding a guy that's basically got the ability, so to speak, to uh, quite literally, um, you know, blind me on every single attack. Okay, he died there. So you want to be very careful of some of these effects that these enemies could possibly have. Alright, this guy could be a little bit more dangerous because he's level 80. But, doink doink. Done. So that's it for this vault. There's the first level of uh, the 4 or 5 power of uh, High Peak out of the way. I'll note, by the way, basically you can see the level this guy is now 61, so I think these guys do gradually get a little bit tougher as you level up. So they'll actually get higher and higher in level, gradually, not a whole lot, but it's enough to be noticeable. Okay, we got ourselves another monster, monster ball by the looks of it. Oh wow, we've actually got the unique um, multi-hued dragon, so that'll be fun. A unique multi-hued dragon is always fun. By the way, it has a project too, so I'll get to show that off. Why are you injured already? I have no idea why that guy's injured, but whatever, he can be injured. We got ourselves another vault right here, apparently, so... I should probably note, by the way, this vault, you can't see in it because it's a vault, so... That's why you're basically not getting anything with this, like, a, you know, ability to sort of look around it. 
It's basically blocking the the view around it. So it's basically just right here. And we're actually going to jump at this guy. There's a rare mind slayer right there. Okay, how do I want to address these guys? I've got this guy right there, the mind slayer right there. This guy's weaker, so I might be able to pull off an like easy instant kill on him before this guy's a time to react. So we'll go after him first, I guess. Yeah, right there, Bink. Oh, the guy's annoying, but whatever, he's out of the way. And that's got to be the most scariest thing you can possibly see in one of these levels. Here's a unique uh, Forge Giant Guardian. This guy's a Shadow Blade, and he's also a Necromancer, so that's basically what I'm going to be up against when I'm basically trying to get through there. 10,000 hit points worth of ouch sitting right there. All right, we actually want to go this way. I actually want to go down here and like open up the way here. Um, so that guy healed up again, or he didn't heal up again. Uh, he's just he's just injured for some reason. And they're all reacting to uh, my presence, so to speak here. And he says hi. Hey, why well, you know he just you know popped up right there. But whatever, he's gonna snap him. He's out of the way. I'm just gonna sit here for a moment and. Pop him. Okay, that guy's there. Kill you. And apparently that just you now fade at the wrong, wrong point right there. Pop him. I went the wrong way, he went the other way. Right there he is. Let's go here, I'm just going to tear down the wall. Um, I probably should have torn, torn, torn down that wall there instead, just to get to jump on these guys, but you know, it's just a regular worm, not a multi hue or anything. Let's jump down here, do that. All done. Okay, I, I'm actually kind of tempted to go in this room here, so... Screw it! We're gonna go uh, attack these guys kind of early, but uh, rest up. Power, power, power up. And this might sting. Doom. So, this guy right here, you want to note that this guy, he has a prodigy. He's actually got the prodigy draconic body, which means he's actually gonna heal up. Um, I basically want to try and fight this guy all in one go, not like, you know, in like one small go, because he's going to be able to heal up if I don't manage to kill him, so to speak, right away. Step here. Oh, that really hurt. I might have uh, just pushed in a little bit too fast there. Time shield. Alright, this might be tricky, but we're just going to transport out. That was not a good place to transport to. We actually transport two, three tiles away from the boss here, so... That was the worst possible way to uh, transport out of there. I'm just going to sit here. Heal up very quickly. I don't think these guys reacted. Or, no, they did react. They're just uh, reacting the wrong way. Um, note that uh, the other guy's down there, he's, he's active. I just want to go up here a little bit. 
We're just going to do the same thing here again, basically. Get rid of all these dragons. This is kind of risky, but I just want to kill these guys because I don't think they alerted the other guys to my presence. So yeah, those guys are... Okay, he's definitely moving around, that guy there, so I do want to try and take him out. And yeah, the Prismatic Dragon, he has a special ability where it basically changes his, his element type constantly. Oh, well, this guy's uh, active now. This will be fun. He actually tried to use Time Prism on me, but it failed, which is lucky for me, but... Uh, yeah, we're up against the uh, big badass giant right here, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to try fighting him. I'm going to basically win Blade to start off with. He did Shadow Step on me to try and daze me, but I think he hit me right soon after. He is disarmed, which is nice, so he basically has Lord Attack. Not that it's going to help me a whole lot, but, you know, there's Switch Place he did on me, so he's got Evasion for 10 turns, the bastard. Uh, we're just going to yoink this way. Now if I want to, I can actually leave this level, but I, I think I can actually take this guy easily enough. I've already taken off 2,000 of his HP, so to speak. So... Yeah, we're just going to move this way. He'll of course pursue me a little bit on the level, but, you know, whatever. Heal up. And I think our prismatic friend down here is uh right there. Uh I do believe that the uh, dragon's nearby. Nope, this dragon's nearby. That dragon's nearby. Not the dragon I really care about is near, nearby, so they're dead. The two multi hues that are accompanying this guy are dead. I'm just going to heal up. Boink. And basically, you'll look at this basically. Um, she received almost 1800 um, healing from Draconic Body. Now, Draconic Body is basically a passive talent. When he goes off, though, he's got four return to cooldown. So, I want to basically attack her now. This, um, I think he's a female. I'm not sure what um, sex this guy is. But basically, I want to take this guy out as fast as possible before he can really do anything. So, that guy's out of the way. I got the Force Giant now to think about. Right there. I'm going to move this way. You know what, we're actually going to back off just a little bit. Let his flames burn out a little bit there. Hello, what the hell just happened? I think he activated Time Prison on me there. So let's just see if he uh, possibly did that. So, all of that was just Time Prison, you know, in a nutshell right there. Now, he's actually got Time Shield on and a whole lot of our stuff, so... We're actually going to just teleport away for now. And just go right back to it. Alright, he's right up there, so bink, 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 bink. And I'm actually going to... Go like that. Now, because, like, uh, I want to note that because this guy's got the ability to sort of use Cleansing Flame, I don't want to be inside, like, his flames when, I, like, you know, he's using them. So, step here. Do that. And he's using Shadow Ambush again, which is kind of annoying, I guess. 
activate this. Uh, we don't need to put it on the speed boost yet, so we can just go maybe cripple them. Do that to them. Let's try bleeding them. I think I missed him with the sweep, so that didn't really do much. And with that, he's down to 21%, so teleport again. Easiest way to kill something, just use teleport, so to speak. It works very, very well. You're right there now, so... Apparently he can uh, fire a free damn fire down the Korgar here, so... Let's teleport here. And I'll just uh, power up him from, you know, the blind side. Doink. Because he's in the Necromancer, so, you know, he'll survive a little bit longer. So let's we'll keep going on him. Eventually he'll die. So he's out of the way. Uh, whatever, it's going to go dink. And they're all out of the way. There should only be the vault at this point, so... Slowly but surely, we got through this level. Hello, Mr. Bone Giant. Let's uh, activate this, 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 this. Boom. That guy's out of the way. A Naga Meridian. Dealt with. Pyromancer, easy enough. Cryomancer. Also uh, easy to deal with. Nothing to him. So, that's this level out of the way. Uh, I might want to look at this moving infusion, so we'll actually keep that for a moment. See if there's anything in here that sort of, you know, catches my interest and I don't see anything, so... Next level! Mage Hunter greets us. Hello, Mage Hunter. He's out of the way. So they're all dealt with, and we got ourselves a unique bone giant yet again. Lots and lots of bone giants. This guy's got total thuggery on, so this guy's actually a marauder just from automatically looking at him. He's also got necrotic aura on him. He's also got um, uh, other stuff, I guess. He's a Nicomancer marauder is what he is. That's, all, I, that's what I'll say about him. Okay, we're just going to think, kill these guys, and track. Now, if I alert these guys, I think he's going to say hi, so we're just going to kill this guy. And we're just going to teleport a character here, and it's basically run down this direction. Apparently that mage hunter dropped the Randart artifact for some reason. And this is actually a vault right there. So, can't see through it. I actually recognize this vault too. Um, this vault is basically a very interesting vault because how this vault works, you basically have to dig through, through it to get through where you need to go. So, there's going to be these diggable walls, so I can basically go one-on-one -on -one a bunch of these guys. And eventually we will... I basically pick up a lot of experience through this vault. I think we'll do that another time though, so... Whoops, I just went through this guy. So, we're going to have these guys all on our ass in a moment. All these guys. Probably not that guy though. Let them come to me. Sounds me for a turn.
And there he is. So yeah, you basically, you know, saw the other guys taking action, decide what's going on. I'll go intervene. Pumped up this, we'll pump up this, pump up this, pump up this. Cripple him. He's crippled. He's disarmed. He's injured. He's getting crushed. He's dead. So that was an easy unique to go through. There's the crown command. Um, I think I already specified a little bit a while ago about race specific items here and another race specific item. This one uh, does something for halflings. I can't remember what exactly it does, but halflings get a huge boost from using the uh, crown command for their character. Just to point out that out for halfling type characters. We're actually going to sell a lot of stuff, I think, so. Get rid of all that crap. I'm not sure I really have to worry about any, you know, instant kill type of situations popping up at this point, so. Maybe I'll just explore this uh, dungeon normally. Basically, you know, see me just naturally run this gauntlet, so to speak, without looking around. All right, we finally saw it there. So this guy, if you look at his talents, he has access to reassemble over five. So he gets the ability to uh, resurrect whenever he dies. So, you know, this guy was able to do that. And he's blocking now, so I don't want to be hit by that. There's his reassemble going off, you know, for natural purposes. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. Yes, this is what it looks like when I rip through stuff at record time. Boink. Hit that guy so fast his uh, bolt didn't even get a chance to explode on me. Boom. Zap. Alright, so that's all basically it for the level stuff for the vault. So we'll do that for the rest of this episode, I think. We'll basically say three, episode, three levels of the uh, high peak will be enough, much like for Dreadfall. This is such a big, a big dungeon. So this vault I'm basically in here is um, a vault where you're basically digging through to get through stuff. I'll note that if you have access to it, wearing something that lets you see dragon type of enemies is actually very beneficial here. So we're actually going to put this on. Um, I think just for the simple reason that I, I want to be able to basically see the dragons basically when I pop up to them. These dragons are very, very da dangerous. The ones that um, basically appear in this vault. So, getting some hindsight warning whenever I'm gonna, you know, reach them will be beneficial, so to speak. Damn, my mage hunters are taking up a. Uh... These guys are all high level, by the way. These monsters in here. Okay, we want this wall here. And we want to think that was stupid attacking that guy, but you know, I like flurry. I like the flurry things to death. Oh boy, I'll die, please. I actually don't expect much of a fret from any of these guys in here, to be honest. But one of them, there's basically one. There's actually three. One of these cells that I'm basically going into is going to be really threatening, and then the others are also going to be somewhat threatening. So I want to be very careful when I get around to it. Because of how threatening it is. And we might actually be coming up to it right about now. I think it's this cell right here is really threatening, so you're probably about to see it in a moment.
Uh, we want to step here. No, it's not this one, apparently. But we're getting close to it. I know that. We're getting toward the end of this this specific uh, part of the, you know, the instance. Okay, there it is. So this is probably the, one of the most dangerous, like, you know, faults just because of this one little square right here. Um, people will unknowingly come into this dungeon and be like, you know, it's just a bunch of one single monsters. They'll basically get to this tile with like these four right here. These two guys can kick your ass. These mul these greater multi-hued uh, level 94 dragons. This these guy these chuckleheads next to them aren't you know anything to scoff at either. So I actually don't want to basically. Um, I I basically want to hold off and going in there. I want to basically try and level up, and then I'll maybe come back there. Maybe. Now I'll note that uh, this dungeon is kind of special and that it has two entrances. So this is actually one of those situations where you want to basically um, tunnel around the outskirts of the dungeon. You'll basically find a door. Here's the door into the other part of the dungeon. And we'll basically just walk in here, kill that guy. Basically, the doors aren't connected to uh, the actual dungeon all the time. Sometimes it won't be connected at all, I don't think. Okay, we got ourselves uh, Drake and then his like, little buddies. Note that his buddies are a lot weaker than he is. Whoops, what just happened there? I just got hit by a trap of some sort. Three more experience to get up to 100%, so we'll probably get that before I have to, uh, or if I decide to go after that guy, I'll be basically high enough. Okay, what's going on here? That I think this guy is actually, at this point, he has some sort of ability where I hit him, he'll basically lose my sight, not just the other way around. So let's actually see maybe what that's going on. So this guy, um, hold ground perhaps. That's a orcus ra racial talent right there. Ward. Maybe this is equipment doing it, but um, basically, whenever I hit this guy, I'll just get blinded. Is what's going on here. Whoops. Yeah, I missed him there. With a single target, you know, direct target type ability sometimes. Misclick. Boink. Alright, um, I'll note that when you're going through this section, there's also something else to be worried about. Um, basically, when you get toward the, uh, the end over here, uh, you saw a picture of it, but basically there's another dragon enemy that I'm going to be facing up against. But yeah, let's just rest up, make sure I get my stuff filled out. Um, blind speed is now 5-5, five, five, so that's done. And I think I said that I was you know, maybe going to push this up a little bit just so I can maybe get a little bit of a boost from uh, my racial floor and talent right there. That would just make it so I could use it a whole lot more, which would be useful in the final fight, and I'm also going to benefit from the little bit of extra willpower I'm basically boosting into as well at this point, because that's what I'm basically going to be boosting, willpower. Okay, so this... Um... This is basically, you know, the other dangerous part. You basically have these guys right here. And... You basically, you know, are going to be fighting against... Um... A single multi-hue, but still, a single multi-hue is going to be dangerous enough. Those guys are being idiots and fighting each other for some reason, so... Let's go in here. I'll basically activate all this stuff for these guys. These guys don't threaten me as much as the other guy, because there's only one multi-hue, so to speak, right here. This guy will probably die in a little bit, because he's a lot weaker, so... Let's do that. Um... Boink. And I still got telepathy, so I basically, you know, if you have telepathy for a certain type, you can basically see him even if you're blinded. So these guys have that sort of, you know, detriment to go for them. 
Okay, those guys, I want to basically just wait for him to sort of approach me a little bit. Activate this, we're going to basically spider poison him. Do that. Um, Windblade. And then, yeah. Nothing really to those guys specifically compared to the other two. Now I could probably sit here and let these guys beat the crap out of each other and eventually they will, you know, kill themselves. But we'll do that instead. Dink, 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 dink. I'm going to basically hit this guy. Make sure he's out of the way first. They're out of the way. I'll note that down here there's also, you know, a couple of rooms that you can dig into. These are, you know, the standard enemies again for this vault. And a Dalek, that'll be fun. Windblade. Cripple. Do that to him. Oh, he just tried to use that uh, ability on me. It's just going to do a bit of uh, weak shadow damage for a little while. He's out of the way. So, over here I'm going to go. Alright, there's still this uh, guy that basically escaped. We'll kill him. And we're going to go right back to this room again. So, notice that they're injured. I could wait here and eventually they'll, they'll kill themselves. But yeah, basically you have to worry about free breath att attacks from all these guys basically hitting you. Um, I, I would probably recommend digging into this tile here. And then... Essentially at this point, just book it. So, we're just going to go this way. We're going to actually just, you know, let those guys sort of funnel out of this dungeon a little bit. You know, maybe hopefully... Alright, there we go. So this guy's right here. I'm going to activate this right now. We're going to let him come to me. Dink. Dink, dink. And we're just going to cripple him. So one of them is out of the way. There's the other one. So, primarily I'm only worried about these guys, not the, uh, the weaker, um, this regular Drake. So let's go dink. And yeah, this guy's out of the way. That's basically it for that little dungeon. So that one's very quick. Wasn't you know too much to it. Um, I'm gonna basically pick this up as I compare it. And then we're gonna do a little bit of calculation for a little bit. Quick calculation. So 9% so we get to uh, level 50. Think we can get w within 3 levels? I hope so. Think uh, we're just going to basically finish these guys off before I go into my inventory. Uh, that's a good sign that there is... Wow, we've already come across the unique. We have the unique in our sights. He's right there. And uh, he's got eyeballs right there. Interesting. Yeah, I'm taking damage from him from this crap right here. Fortune Hammer to Deep Bellow, cool. Um, I don't think I'll be using any of this stuff, so let's get rid of that instantly. Alright, so I picked up some stuff uh, there in the last uh, floor. I just want to make a, you know, a big quick look before we basically um, do without it. I might want to keep this on actually. This is a nice ring and it does give me, you know, a critical multiplier and stuff like that, disarm unit and all that. 
but um, I think we're actually going to get rid of Disp in favor of this ring here. I like the ability of sort of being able to see dragons, and I like the also resistance and other stuff is like confusion immunity is giving. Um, I could possibly, you know, use this. Um, I could replace this with like, you know, the crown elements with other stuff instead of, of like, you know, using it for confusion immunity. I don't really need the ability to map out in the last level, so that's sort of why I'm thinking about doing that. Okay, these infusions, they seem to have gotten higher cooldowns for some reason, but whatever. Um, I basically want to check these cooldowns and essentially what, how they're faster can make me move. So this basically moves me 578% of a, you know, one game turn. It gives me six turns of immunity to daze. This one gives me uh, nine turns of immunity to daze, 634 for, you know, a little bit more. I think we actually like this one over our current one, so we're going to replace that. Just heal up a little bit. I'll get rid of this. All right, so at this point, um, we got ourselves an Arcane Blade Mind Slayer Unique who's already on the move. He's, you know, run away from the stairs over here, so um, that will be fun to sort of deal with when we get back. So basically, I'm going to go through three more levels of High Peak like this. And then we're actually going to have the final boss fight for the campaign. Um, for now, I think we've had enough for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care, and you know we'll see you guys in the next episode.